Hello friends, welcome to the lecture on estimation of missing data. In today's lecture, we are going to understand how to find out how to estimate the missing data and various methods and techniques which are being used to represent the rainfall data. So let us start. The learning objectives of today's session are to understand the necessity of missing data, to study the methods of estimation of missing data. So first of all, we will look at the necessity of estimation of missing data. Sometimes a rainfall amount of a certain rain gauge station for a certain days may be missing due to absence or some observer or instrumental failure. In such a case, it might be needed to estimate the missing rainfall amount by approximating the value of the data of the nearby rain gauge stations. Now look at the methods of estimating the missing data. Basically there are two methods. The following methods are generally used for computing the missing rainfall data. Which are the two methods? First is the arithmetical mean method and second is normal ratio method. Arithmetical mean method or arithmetic mean method. Let us see if the normal annual precipitation at various stations are within 10% of the normal precipitation at station X, then only this method is useful. For example, if you are considering a catchment which are having say 5 rain gauge stations out of which the data of station 1 is missing. So let us treat the station 1 as a station X for which the data is missing. Now how many stations are remaining? 4 stations. Station 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this method is useful only when the normal annual precipitation at various stations are within 10% of the normal precipitation at station X. So if you are having consecutive values of normal annual precipitation for station X as well as station 2, 3, 4, 5, then you will have to compare the annual precipitation value of station X along with the annual precipitation values of station 2, 3, 4, 5. If there is no variation more than 10% in the annual precipitations of station X and rest of the stations, then only you can use the arithmetic mean method. Okay. Then the missing precipitation Px at station X can be determined by using simple arithmetic method, arithmetic mean method. So what is the procedure? Select three rain gauge stations at index stations close to missing station X. So closest to the missing station X, we will select three rain gauge stations. Then the rainfall data of the three index stations for the day for which data is missing is also collected. Then the average annual rainfall values of all the four stations should also be known. Now if the average annual at each of these three index stations differ within 10% of the average annual rainfall of station X, then only we can proceed as earlier I have stated. Then a simple arithmetical average method of precipitation at the three index station will give the estimated quantity of station X. So let us understand. I will elaborate the things. Then the missing rainfall of station can be calculated as if P1, P2, P3 and Px are the annual precipitations at station 1, 2, 3 and X respectively. So annual precipitations here are denoted by P1, P2, P3 and Px for station 1, 2, 3 and X. Next is N1, N2, N3 and Nx be the normal or average annual precipitations at stations 1, 2, 3 and x respectively then Px is equal to 1 by 3 into bracket P1 plus P2 plus P3. So simple average is done. In the vicinity of station x there are rest of the three stations P1, P2, P3. Here the average values of annual precipitations of P1 plus P2 plus P3 will give 
the missing rainfall at station X. Then if the normal, then second method is a normal ratio method. If the normal precipitation vary more than 10%, then earlier method is not useful. Then Px is estimated by weighing the precipitation at various stations by the ratios of normal annual precipitations. The formula to find out the missing rainfall data at station X is equal to Nx upon 3 multiplied by into bracket P1 upon N1 plus P2 upon N2 plus P3 upon N3. Meaning of the values of P1 and N1, P2, N2, P3, N3 remains the same as stated earlier. We will understand this concept with the help of an example. So let us see the example. The average annual rainfall at station stations A, B and A, B, C and X in the basin are 80.97, 67.59, 76.28 and 92.01 cm respectively. In the year 1975, the station X was inoperative and the stations A, B and C recorded annual rainfall of 91.11, 72.23 and 79.89 cm respectively. Estimate the rainfall at station D in that year. So here instead of station X, it is stated as station D over here and surrounding to station D, there are three stations A, B and C in the same basin, in the same catchment for which the average annual rainfall it is given over here. Okay, so the solution as per the formula, if we look at the values, there is a variation more than 10% between the rainfall value of X and rest of the stations. So we cannot use the arithmetical mean method. So we have to use normal ratio method over here as the variation in the average annual rainfall is more than 10%. So this is the average annual rainfall. You can see the values that differ more than 10%. Therefore, we are using normal ratio method. So Px is equal to Nx upon 3 into bracket P1 plus uh, P1 upon N1 plus P2 upon N2 plus P3 upon N3. So here Px is equal to 92.01 upon 3. So where is 92.01? Here it is for station X is the annual rainfall divided by 3 multiplied by P1. It is 91.11. Then divided by N1. N1 is 80.97. So rest of the things you can have the data from the example itself. So after putting all these values of P1 and N1, P2 and N2, P3 and N3, you will get the value of rainfall at station D as 99.41 centimeter in the year 1975 when the station was inoperative. So even though there was no recording at station D, you can predict, you can forecast, you can find out the missing rainfall data if you are having the values of the data of the rest of the three stations over here. So I hope you have understood the numerical, you have understood the concept over here. So let us move to the next part. There are some methods of presentation of rainfall data. Rainfall data needs to be presented by using these methods. A few commonly used methods of presentation of rainfall data are given as follows. First is the mass curve of rainfall. Second is the hydrograph and third is the point rainfall method. So let us start with the mass curve of the rainfall. So this figure is nothing but the mass curve of a rainfall. Let us understand the figure first. It is a graphical representation of the data, rainfall data, in which x axis shows a time in days. 1, 2, 3, 4 days are there for which the rainfall values are recorded. And y axis shows accumulated precipitation in centimeter. So if you look at the figure for 4 days, more than 4 days, the values of a storm are recorded which shows the first storm it lasted more than two days and second storm okay it, it lasted more about uh, about one day okay which has a value of four centimeter depth of the rainfall 
and it has the 10 centimeter value over here you can look at this 10 centimeter coincides this particular point so mass curve it is a plot of accumulated precipitation against time it is the accumulated precipitation means what earlier precipitation is added to the next precipitation again it is added to the next precipitation again it is added to the next precipitation and so on till the storm it is happening so it is plotted in a chronological order records of a float type weighing bucket type rain gauges are of this form you will directly get the mass curve of the values if you are using the float type weighing bucket type for rain gauges as we have seen all these things earlier it gives information on duration and magnitude of the storm duration here you can see in days and magnitude it is given in centimeter depth of the storm intensity at various time intervals in a storm is equal to slope of the curve if you want to find out the intensity you will need to find out the slope of the curve over here intensity in mm per hour centimeter per hour you can find out here depth it is given directly in centimeters second method is to plot the values in the form of hydrograph so what is the hydrograph it is a plot of rainfall intensity against time interval so if you look at the graphical representation on x axis you will find time in hours and on y axis rainfall intensity in centimeter per hour, per hour. so here instead of rainfall depth the, uh, the in intensity it is given in centimeter per hour and time it is uh, in hours so it is in the form of bar chart so this graphical representation is for the earlier figure which is having the storm first storm which is lasted about 56 hours so it is shown over here hydrograph of the earlier figure first storm which lasted for 56 hours duration more than two days and total depth of the storm is 10 centimeter so here from 0 to 8 hours intensity of rainfall was different from 8 to 16 hours it was different so after 8 hours interval the intensity as uh, intensities are marked and uh, this particular figure shows the hydrograph over here so it can be derived from the mass curve of the rainfall so to find out the hydrograph values you can derive the values from the mass curve of the rainfall it is represented as a bar chart it is useful in developing design storms to predict extreme floods area under the hydrograph is equal to precipitation received in that time period so if you want to find out the precipitation received in first eight hours of the first storm then you will just find out the area under this particular rectangle so this ordinate x multiplied by multiplied by the ordinate y you will get the area under this particular bar chart for the 0 to 8 hours which will give you the precipitation received in that particular first 8 hour so the value of precipitation will be in centimeter since it is on y axis it is centimeter per hour multiplied by hour you will get the value of precipitation received in first 8 hours in centimeter you will get the depth of rainfall over here third method is point rainfall point rainfall also known as a station rainfall refers to the rainfall data of a particular single station for a single station only we uh, use this particular method to represent the data which is known as point rainfall depending upon the need data can be listed daily weekly monthly seasonal or annual values for various periods graphically these data are represented as plots of magnitude versus chronological time in the form of a bar diagram so let us see how the bar diagram it is prepared if you look at the bar diagram this figure shows the bar chart of the annual rainfall at station m so there is one station m and for which the annual rainfalls are plotted in the form of bar charts ranging from 1950 up to 1979 so n number of years they have taken and this particular bar chart the x-axis is the year and y-axis is what annual rainfall in mm 
for station M only. So here you can see there is a variation of rainfall, annual rainfall for a single station located at a single place inside the catchment. So annual values are represented in mm and this particular dotted line shows the mean value of the precipitation at station M which is equal to 568.7 mm in this case and this dark black line shows 20% less than mean which is equal to 426.5 mm. So this is nothing but the representation in the form of point rainfall. So I hope you understood the things. I request all of you to go through these standard references. If you are ha having any doubt, you can ask me on my email dnpaitankarce at sanjeevani.org.in. Thank you for listening. Happy learning.